What's going on guys, it's Simo. So if you guys wanna learn a deck that is incredibly consistent, has tools for almost every situation, and is very reminiscent of Zodiac, well let me introduce you to Sky Strikers. Sky Strikers is an archetype that centralizes around one monster, Sky Striker Ace Ray. The strength of this deck lies in its consistency and ability to achieve victory through controlling the game and slowly out-resourcing its opponents through sheer card advantage. One massive benefit of Sky Strikers is that their cards are incredibly generic, and while the deck can be played in a pure variant, a lot of other archetypes can and will make use of these powerful generic cards that Sky Strikers has to offer. Let's begin with the one and only monster in the main monster lineup, Sky Striker Ace Ray. Ray comes equipped with two very powerful abilities. Her first ability allows us to once per turn tribute her for cost during either player's turn to special summon a Sky Striker Ace monster to our extra monster zone. Additionally, while Ray is in our graveyard, once per turn if a Sky Striker Ace Link monster is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, we can special summon Ray from the graveyard. What makes Ray such a formidable threat is that because of these two effects, Ray is excellent at playing around most hand traps in the competitive format. Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence are ineffective because Ray can tag out before either of these cards can stop her. Against Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherry, she can tag out in response as Chain Link 2 into the Sky Striker Ace monster revealed by our opponent. And against Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, if one of our Link monsters were to be destroyed, Ray will simply resurrect herself from the graveyard and tag out into another Link monster, essentially making our opponent waste a card. At a time in the game where hand traps have become more popular than ever, Ray's level of resilience cannot be underestimated. Now we've been mentioning Sky Striker Link monsters, so let's see what tools we have at our disposal. Each of the Sky Striker Link monsters is a Link 1, only requiring another Sky Striker monster of a different attribute other than its own as Link material. Very similarly to Zodiac, where you could overlay one Zodiac monster on top of another of a different name, the Sky Striker Link monsters essentially function in the same way, just utilizing a different summoning mechanic. Each Sky Striker Link monster has 1500 attack and can only be special summoned once per turn. Sky Striker Ace Kagari gains 100 attack for each spell card in our graveyard. One core component of the Sky Striker's game plan is to load numerous spell cards into the graveyard, which really gets the engine going, but we'll elaborate more on that a bit later. Additionally, when Kagari is special summoned, we can target one Sky Striker spell card in our graveyard and add it to our hand. Kagari is effectively a plus one every single turn we summon her, since she's constantly refueling our hand with our best resources. Her attack gaining ability is also how we can deal additional damage and help take out larger threats. Sky Striker Ace Shizuku, on the other hand, is a bit more defensive. Rather than gaining attack, Shizuku forces all of our opponent's monsters to lose 100 attack and defense for each spell in our graveyard. Additionally, if Shizuku was special summoned this turn, once per turn during the end phase, we can add one Sky Striker spell card from deck to hand with a different name from every card in our graveyard. As the effect implies, we're most likely going to be making Shizuku before ending our turn, so we can generate even more card advantage. The stat reduction effect may not be relevant in the early stages of the game, but can be crippling the longer the game goes on. Shizuku can also help fix our hands to get any necessary spell card to help get our engine going. Both Shizuku and Kagari can also trigger during our opponent's turn, so if we happen to have Rei on the field, we can tag out into either one and gain an additional resource during our opponent's turn. While it won't be released until Cybernetic Horizon, I wanted to briefly cover Sky Striker Ace Hayate. Hayate can attack our opponent directly, then after damage calculation, if Hayate battled, we can send one Sky Striker card from deck to grave. Hayate can tremendously speed up our engine going second by attacking, sending a Sky Striker spell card to the grave, then tagging out into Kagari to add that card to our hand. We can also send Ray to the graveyard to keep our engine going if any of our Link monsters get threatened. While Hayate doesn't generate any actual card advantage, it's a key component that helps the deck run much more smoothly with its inclusion. Moving on to the spell cards, spell cards are going to make up a majority of the cards in this deck because these are the tools that not only bolster consistency, but also help control the game. Starting with the strongest spell card in the deck, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. A majority of the Sky Striker cards share several common characteristics. 
First, they can only be activated if we control no monsters in the main monster zone. They also have an extra effect that applies if we have three or more spells in our graveyard. So for engage, if we control no monsters in the main monster zone, we can add one Sky Striker card from deck to hand, except another copy of itself. As a bonus, if we have three or more spells in grave, we also get to draw one card. Notice how this card is not once per turn, so we're going to be using Kagari to recur and abuse this card as much as possible. In most instances, the Sky Striker spells are often one for one exchanges, but once we have three spells in our graveyard, these cards often become plus ones, making it easy to out resource our opponent. With that in mind, we want to opt to play a slew of other spells to help facilitate loading the grave with three spell cards as quickly as possible, including cards such as Tomb Table of Contents or Foolish Burial Goods in tandem with Metal Foes Fusion. Next up is Sky Striker Mecha Hornet Drones. If we control no monsters in our main monster zone, special summon one Sky Striker Ace token, which is a Warrior Dark level 1 token, attack 0, defense 0, in defense position, and it cannot be tributed. And if we have 3 or more spells in grave when this effect resolves, the token's attack and defense become 1500. What's important here is that the token is a Sky Striker Ace monster, meaning it can be used to link into any of our Sky Striker Link monsters, but without even requiring a normal summon. Engage and Hornet combined make up of a very small Sky Striker engine that can be played in several other archetypes, granting free Link materials, added consistency, and card draw. Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor is another quick play spell that allows us to target and negate the effects of a face-up effect monster until the end of the turn. But if we have three spells in Grave, we can also take control of that monster until the end phase. Basically Forbidden Chalice fused with enemy controller, Widow Anchor has a lot of flexibility, and just like its other Sky Striker spell counterparts, it's not once per turn. Next up are two Sky Striker Maneuvers, Afterburner and Jamming Waves. Both being normal spells and essentially having the same effect, just reversed, Afterburner can target and destroy a face-up monster, then destroy a spell or trap if we have three or more spells in Grave. And Jamming Waves can target and destroy a set spell or trap, then destroy a monster if we have three or more spells in Grave. Solid searchable removal for the archetype, and again, not once per turn. Sky Striker Mecha Shark Cannon is a quick play spell that allows us to target and banish a monster in our opponent's graveyard. But with three or more spells in grave, we can special summon that monster to our field instead, it just can't attack. While a bit situational, being able to revive something from our opponent's grave could be huge, considering Shark Cannon doesn't negate the monster's effects. Not something to max out on, but a nice one of. Sky Striker Mecha Eagle Booster is a quick play that makes another monster unaffected by card effects except its own, with additional protection from battle if we have three or more spells in the grave, and Sky Striker Mech Armory Hercules Base is an equip spell that enables two attacks on monsters for the monster it's equipped to, and if the equipped monster destroys a monster by battle while we have three or more spells in grave, we get to draw one card. Decent cards, but again, a bit situational, so these cards shouldn't be played in large quantities. Wrapping up the Sky Striker cards, we have a Field Spell and a Continuous Spell. The Field Spell, Sky Striker Airspace Area Zero, has two interesting once per turn effects. The first effect allows us to target another card we control, then excavate the top three cards of our deck. We can choose to add one Sky Striker card to our hand and shuffle the rest back into the deck. Then, if we excavated a Sky Striker card, we send the card we initially targeted to the graveyard. This effect allows us to potentially convert dead spell cards into Sky Striker spells to get our engine going, while also fueling the graveyard with spells to get us at or above 3 to enable the rest of our deck. The second effect is that if Area 0 is in the field zone and is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, we can special summon one Sky Striker Ace monster from our deck. Combined with cards like Mystical Space Typhoon, Twin Twisters, the extra effect of Afterburner, or even the card we're going to be discussing next, Area Zero can actually add a lot of consistency to the deck, ensuring that we get to Ray to start our plays as quickly as possible. 
And finally, the continuous spell card Sky Striker Mecha Modules Multi-Roll. Once again armed with two once per turn effects, the first effect allows us to target and send a card we control to the graveyard to bestow us with protection from our opponent being able to activate cards or effects in response to our spell card activations for the rest of this turn. This can force activations of cards from our opponent because once multi-roll resolves, we'll have free range in making the most optimal plays when it comes to our arsenal of removal spells. Additionally, during the end phase, we can set Sky Striker spells with different names from our graveyard to the field up to the number of Sky Striker cards we activated this turn while multi-roll was face up on the field, but those cards are banished when they leave the field. This card essentially acts as a themed spellbook of judgment for the archetype. If you use two Sky Striker spells while multi rolls face up on the field, you get to set two Sky Striker spells during the end phase. This is yet another way the deck is able to out-resource our opponents by doubling up on spell uses, but it can also contradict the desire to have three or more spells in Grave and enabling the extra ability of our Sky Striker spells. A very powerful card, but requires careful planning in order to obtain maximum value. I really hope you guys enjoyed this introduction to Sky Strikers. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and if you found this video informative, consider backing me on Patreon, because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.